Hey y'all, welcome to the show. I started Hunker Down with Harry because I wanted to try to entertain you a little bit, maybe give you some distraction during this crazy time. But there's another reason I started the show. I feel a real need to communicate with y'all. You have communicated with me with videos and letters um, and it's really meant a lot to me to see how y'all are coping. And I take a great sense of comfort knowing that y'all are hearing what I'm going through too. And yesterday was one of the hardest days I've ever had. My good friend and mentor, Ellis Marsalis, died two nights ago. I've been talking to my family a lot about it. They've been really supportive and they've been helping me get through it. But knowing that I can tell y'all about it too, really helps me. It's therapeutic for me and I appreciate y'all listening. I met Ellis when I was about eight years old. The Marsalis family was friends with our family and I really got to know Ellis well when I was about 14 because I started studying piano with him formally. Ellis Marsalis was one of the great jazz piano players in the world. He um, was a master educator. He was an incredible father. Just a real role model for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm in shock, really. I, I can't believe he's gone. And what made it really hard to process was that he died uh, because of complications with coronavirus. And it just really hit home. I think we're getting to the point now where we're starting to know people directly or indirectly that have been affected by this, by this horrible virus. I don't want to use the time on the show today to make you feel sad. So I want to celebrate Ellis by telling you uh, some of the amazing things about him. Ellis's passion was educating young people. He didn't care how much talent you had. He just wanted you to be better at what you did. Um, right after Hurricane Katrina, Ellis's son Branford and I and our manager, Anne Marie Wilkins, decided we wanted to do something to help the community. So we started the New Orleans Musicians Village. And right in the center of that village is the Ellis Marsalis Center for Music. It's a big, beautiful community center where kids come and they learn all kinds of stuff about music and piano playing and musical technique and recording. And it's just an incredible place right in the center of the Ninth Ward, which was one of the neighborhoods that was very badly damaged by Hurricane Katrina. Ellis in the last decade was particularly passionate about educating underserved kids. He designed the curriculum at the center um, and set a very, very high standard. So this is the Ellis Marsalis Center for Music. It's located right in the center of the Ninth Ward and it serves to broaden opportunities for underserved children, youth and musicians by providing them a safe and positive environment where they can develop uh, not only musically but academically and socially. They provide instruction in music, the arts, um, they give them academic support, computer coding, there is basic food security, mental health support. The center also delivers strategic assistance and tools. There's a world-class performance hall, recording studios that serve to enhance the professional growth of musicians throughout New Orleans. If you want to learn more about the Ellis Marsalis Center for Music, you can go to ellismarsaliscenter.org. Um, and I am going to ask you to make a small donation at some point. It doesn't matter how small, um, but anything helps keep this incredible institution going. I'm going to work extra hard to try to make this center worthy of such an incredible man. Uh, so you can look up any information you want to at Ellis Marsalis Center. Dot org. Yesterday was also uh, pretty complicated because I found out that my sister, uh, who is a full bird colonel in the United States Army Reserve, she's a psychiatrist and an internist, she was called to duty yesterday. That's all the information that I have, but please keep my sister uh, in your prayers. And sis, if you're watching this, I love you so much. And um, you are going into the belly of the beast with this COVID-19 virus. 
and we're all praying for you. And we're praying for everybody who is on the front lines trying to keep us safe. The doctors, the nurses, the, 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 the politicians that are spending all night uh, trying to figure out solutions, the trash collectors, the maintenance crews at the hospitals, uh, people in the food service industry, um, everyone. We, we are deeply, deeply grateful to y'all. So sis, I love you and, and uh, good luck. And now it's time for viewer videos. All right, y'all, I got some good ones for you today. I like mixing up this segment with videos and photos and letters. And here's a, here's a beautiful letter from a lady named Dawn Lucero. She says, as an essential worker, I'm out working running a therapeutic group home for emotionally disturbed children. It's draining keeping them distracted right now. We do academics in the morning and theme days in the afternoon, trying to keep them both safe and upbeat with everything going on. Oh, wow, Dawn, that's incredible. It's incredible, I don't know how you do it. I just don't know how you do it. Thank you for writing in and, and, and know that I'm thinking about you and, and, and I'm, I'm appreciative of how difficult your job must be. Hang in there and, and, and keep doing you know, such amazing work. Our next uh, letter is from Elaine Deloach. Elaine says, just saw your program for the first time while I was enjoying a very sloppy roast beef po' boy. You're the perfect side for that, thanks. Elaine, I'll take that compliment any day. If you put me next to a roast beef po' boy in, in any capacity, I'll be happy. And for those of y'all who don't know what a po' boy is, it's basically a big sandwich, like a hero or a submarine sandwich but they're, they're just better. I, I don't mean to offend anybody in other parts of the country, but hey, if you go to Mother's in New Orleans and ask for a roast beef po' boy, they'll give you a roast beef po' boy, but if you go in there and say, I want a debris po' boy dressed, let me, let me explain to you what I'm saying. Debris is after you cook that roast beef down and, 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 and it, it just gets all in the bottom of the, and it just breaks, breaks down and the, all that broken down roast beef, they call that debris. And when you say dressed, after you cook that roast beef for a long time and it just falls apart, all that falling apart stuff, they call debris. And when you say dressed, that means put on, you know, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, mustard, whatever. Let them decide, it doesn't really matter. So you take French bread, put that roast beef debris on there and you have it dressed, I'm done. As they used to say in my family, you'd fight your grandma for that. I mean, I, I, would, I, I don't really mean that. I would never fight my grandma. But you think about it. Next up, we have a question from Shirley Scott. Shirley asks, what do you do to relieve stress and recharge yourself during this quarantine time? Wow, what an amazing question. What I do is try to stick to the routine I had before all of this stuff started. I make sure I exercise every day drink a lot of water, stay away from processed foods, and concentrate on the things that mean the most to me, my family, my friends, and my faith. That, that's really all that matters to me. And if I can keep those things intact when times are good, they sure come in handy when times are bad. I hope that helps. Next we have a photo from Christine. She's from Toronto. She says, do you still take stockies? All right. If you don't know what a stocky is, it's a selfie. And listen, selfies, selfies are fine, but stockies add another level to it. What you do is you hold your phone up here and you kind of frame out half of your face, but there has to be someone in the background that isn't aware that you're taking a picture of them too. So like if Jill is, you know, reading the paper behind me, I'll hold up my phone, cover half my face with it and get her in the background. That's called a stocky. I've developed what I call stocknik. Stocknik is incredible stocky technique. And here's, here's why I think I'm, I'm so good at it. I've, I've, I've become an absolute expert at photographing celebrities without them knowing it. With me in the picture at the same time, I have had some amazing ones. I've had um, Tony Bennett. It's Tony Bennett. He's right there. He has no idea that I'm taking a stocky of him. Jennifer Lopez, okay, Jennifer Lopez is one of the biggest stars in the world. She doesn't even know she, she was in my stocky. That, do you know what kind of stock Nick it takes? 
to, to, to do that. And there's been a bunch of other ones. I had the whole cast of Will and Grace. Do you know how hard that is to do? Do you know, do you know what, what a high degree of difficulty it is to, to stalky an entire cast of a legendary TV show? But I have to tell you, my, my, my proudest moment as a stalkist, that sounds awful. <laughs> my proudest moment as a stalky taker is Big Bird. I got Big Bird. I'm done. Why would I need to take another stalky after I got Big Bird? Who am I going to get? Snuffleupagus after that? I'm, you're never going to get Snuffleupagus. That son of a gun is mysterious. He is mysterious. Snuffleupagus will ease on in. He, he will ease in and he will ease out and sometimes you don't even know he was there. That, that's sexy. I don't think Snuffleupagus is sexy, but the way he, you know what I do? Because the way he would the way he would kind of just come in there. Big Bird is all, you know, talking and, and gregarious and Snuffleupagus will ease on in there. That's a sexy son of a gun. I'm just going to say it. I'm, you know, whatever. I don't mind. Next up, we have a video from Charlotte and Tom. They say, I love all types of music and love to dance. So while we hunker down, here's a little something from Louisiana to you. Watch this. Man, I love that. People don't dance together anymore. They dance kind of at each other. I, I, I love I love that. That's so romantic. Next up, we have a, a photo from Sally. She's from Houston. Sally says, this says it all. Thanks for your hunker down Harry episodes, and I would love to have a beignet right now. Can you believe this? Can you believe what is going on? That's Cafe Du Monde. That's the place where my mom told me when I was about eight years old, never wear black to Cafe Du Monde because you'll get powdered sugar all over you. Look at that. We're going to be back, folks. We're going to be back. Now we have a video from Christine. Christine says, for some extra stress relief and smiles, we just had to share a fun video from our dog, Scout. He's a very lazy dog, but your music obviously helps him have very happy dreams. Check this out. So you can That's unbelievable. Is that for real? Was he like twitching and then you added the music after? Or was he really, if he can move his paws in time that well, I'm gonna hire that, that dog. I don't know what I would hire him to do, but I, I would have him in the band in some capacity. He must be interested in musical dogma. Sherry Burton sent us a video and she says, as a way to keep myself from going nuttier than I am already, I turned some pictures of the animals that I pet sit, and I made some PSA videos. They are worried about the treat situation that this virus might be causing. Watch it. I've been going through these aisles, and there are no treats. How do you expect us to get through these, these difficult days if there aren't any treats? Sherry, I love you, Sherry but that's a little bit creepy. Come on, Sherry, not the message. The message is great, but that scared me a little bit. That scared me. I saw that video last night and I gotta tell you, I was up till seven in the morning. I was thinking that dog was maybe lurking outside my house. Sherry, I'm gonna repeat this, I love you, but that video creeped me out. Nicole Croft sent a video. She says, Kai is five and he wanted to show you how he's enjoying having a captive audience for his daily concerts. Nicole, let's get real. Kai is, is adorable. If you can be quarantined in that house while Kai is playing those drums, you win the MVP of the entire pandemic. You, you, you are gonna be Time Magazine's person of the year. You're gonna be above Dr. Fauci or whoever you think deserves Time Magazine person of the year. It's gonna be you because as adorable as that is, that is unbelievable to be able to be in the house with those drums banging like that. Congratulations to you for being my nominee for Time Magazine's Person of the Year. And Kai, you sound great, keep it up. 
love the purple bucket hat. Next up is a video from my musical soulmate. I met him, you know, 20 something years ago in Paris and we've been uh, musical brothers ever since. He is the most entertaining, charismatic, talented guy you'll ever want to see. He was also uh, my band leader on The Harry Show for two years. Folks, uh, this video was submitted by my, my good friend, Jonathan Dubose Jr. Hi, this is Jonathan Dubose Jr. on the Hunker Down for Harry Show. I have great news for you. Everything is going to be all right. So Kate saw that last night and she was like, I want to put that like on my phone. It just makes me feel so good. When Jonathan Dubose says everything's going to be all right, everything's going to be all right. Shelly Schwartz, she says, we can't be too careful with those who enter our homes at this time. Due to COVID-19, we are self-isolating. No one may enter except Harry Connick Jr., Justin Timberlake, and MacGyver. Thank you. You would still let me in? Justin Timberlake's on that list. I would let Justin into my house. I'm a big fan of Justin Timberlake. We all love Justin Timberlake. I'd let him in. If I knocked on your door, you would really just risk everything to let me, to let me come in there? What if I just show up? You'd call the cops, wouldn't you? I know you would. This is all a big setup. What you're doing is baiting me with the allure of some possible human interaction. I'm gonna go to your place and you're gonna have the cops waiting for me. You're setting me up and you're setting up Sherry Burton, the lady with the creepy dog video. How do you expect us to get through these, these difficult days if there aren't any treats? I did a musical on Broadway a few years back called On a Clear Day, You Can See Forever. And I shared the stage with an immensely talented, incredibly beautiful, uh, kind woman who, who just blew the audiences away every night. Her name is Jessie Mueller and I called her the other day. I said, hey Jessie, will you do something for me? Just film a short video of you singing something kind of inspirational or something to make people feel better during this difficult time. Well, here's what she sent. Hey Harry, it's Jessie. Um, yes, this is my windowsill. Uh, so I know that you, thanks so much for asking me to be a part of this. I know you're super busy with this show. You've got a bunch of episodes under your belt. Um, I sort of, well, I watched part of one. I didn't watch the whole thing, but, cause I, I'm pretty busy. But um, I just know, I feel like you, what you really need is like a really hooky theme song. Um, and I know, again, you're busy, so you probably don't have time to do this. So I thought I'd just throw some ideas out there. Um, it could be like, you know, hunker down, hunker down with Harry. You know, maybe something like that, or, or, well, you're like a jazzy guy, hunker down with Harry, you know, like a, like a kind of sexy, like, you know, I'm not the musician that you are, but you could work with that, or, or maybe like, hunker down, hunker down with Harry, hunker down, hunker down with Harry, and you could layer it with different voices, um, you know, that one's a little more like, you know, newsreel, like, did it, did it, did it, newsreel. Um, you know, I think the possibilities are uh, Hunker down with Harry It's time to hunker down Cause everyone's hunkering down So why not hunker down with your pal Harry You know, I think as long as you, you say it's You know, it's you and here's what we're doing We're hunkering down I mean, I think the possibilities are endless So let me know if you want to kick any of those ideas around uh, You know, I'm here, I'm around Okay, so what I did, that last one, I really liked it. I thought it was really good, so uh, I put some music to it. So, so here's, here's my new theme song with music as sung and written by Jesse Mueller. Hunker down with Harry, it's time to hunker down cause everyone's hunkering down. So why not hunker down with your pal Harry? <laughs> and now, Charlotte's life ponderings. If something easily catches on fire, why is it 
inflammable. Thank you, Char. So if you recall on episode eight, my friends Madison Eisman and Spencer Sutherland sent in some lovely inspirational videos. Falling in love Isn't that nice? I noticed that both of them ended the song with this big chord. Even though it was a soft song, they both went trink, like, like that at the end. Thank you very much. I'll be here all night. Bye. I thought that was fascinating. Why would they end a love song with a big giant chord or like a big flourish like that? And I'm thinking, the only thing that makes sense is because they've been dating for a long time. When, apparently when you've been dating for a long time, you end songs the same. So I started thinking about that and Kate walks in and she says, you should make a song out of their song endings. And I was like, Kate, that, that's genius. So um, this is a, a brand new song and I'm gonna call it Song Ending and it's featuring Madison Eisman and Spencer Sutherland. I, I, I hope you enjoy. I'll be here all night. Thank you very much. I'll be here all night. Thank you very much. I'll be here all night. 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 I'll be here. I'll be here. I'll be here all night. Literally. That's party music. That's what that is. I don't know, Madison and Spencer, if when you recorded those songs, if you knew that that was gonna launch into a completely different song, but I'm, I'm feeling this. I'm gonna send that to Ryan Seacrest, and, and he's gonna make that a hit. That's a hit. That, I know hit music, and that is, that is a hit song. My whole house is dancing to that song. That song, that song is getting us through isolation. That's a, that is a song, that's a song. I'm not gonna say it has the best lyrics. I'm not gonna say it has the best melody. You know why? Because it doesn't have lyrics. It, it doesn't have a melody. But you know what, who cares? It, it, it hits you right, right in your heart. And I've written hundreds of songs and I've sung thousands of songs. And that song right now is the perfect song for me. Can, can we just, can we have a little bit more? Just rewind that. Thank you very much. Bye. I'll be here all night. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. I'll be here all night. Bye. Bye. That's great music. I know great music and that's great music. Thank you, Maddie and Spencer, for that. I think you should go on a, on a tour and, and if all you sang was that, just do a remix. Go down to Miami, you know, go, go sing at Ultra and, and, and they will all open for you. Skrillex and the rest of them, they, they, they will be your opening. You come out there and you sing song endings or whatever it's called and you will shut the house down. We'll see you next time. The city beneath the sea